just amazing, God, the things we've seen as a church family over the years. We, we pray that you continue to do those things here. And we pray that, God, you would help us continue to see this church the way you do. Hey everybody, welcome to RCC Online. My name is Natasha. And my name is Tara, and we are here to share some announcements with you today. Starting with our blood drive, Monday, June 8th, right here at RCC from 2 to 6 p.m. We're having a blood drive. If you haven't signed up already, there's still a couple of spots left over. You can go to www.save3lives, the number three, dot org, and our sponsor code is O, like the letter O, 156. Yes, and starting next Sunday, we will beginning a, be beginning a new series that is called Hmm. 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 So if that makes you curious, you should be sure to tune in next Sunday for the start of that. We've also having been getting have we've also been getting a lot of questions. Yes, questions like when is in-person church going to start back up again? What is the latest COVID update? What are the latest RCC updates? Pastor Mike actually addressed all of those questions in a recent video. You can find it on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, so be sure to check it out and we hope you all have a happy Sunday. See you later.
Welcome to Ripping Community Church Online. My name is Erica, and I am one of the pastors here. Happy Sunday. I am so excited to be here with you today. These past several weeks, we have been in a sermon series called Ordinary People. We have been taking a look at ordinary people in the Bible and seeing how God uses them to do extraordinary things. The truth is, I really don't think anyone is ordinary once they know God, because it's because of his power and his grace and his love that we all can become extraordinary. This past weekend, I went out to eat for the first time in months, and it was glorious. For the first time in a long time, it felt like life was kind of back to normal, but it really wasn't. It wasn't because of all of the lessons that I've taken away from this COVID-19 experience. It has taught all of us lessons about our priorities, about our needs, about our wants, and it has given all of us gifts that we probably would have never gotten had we not had this experience. So today as we come together, I know that all of our circumstances look different. We've all been in the same storm, but our boats haven't all come out the same. Some of them have weathered the storm, some of them need repairs, and some of them are in shambles. With that said, I wanna start this morning by asking you a question. Who are you? Who are you? If you think about that question, how would you answer it? Maybe you would say whatever your name is. My name is Erica. Maybe you would tell me that you're a husband or a father or a wife or a mother. Maybe you would tell me what your occupation is. And I'm asking you this because I want you to think about the labels that you give yourself and the labels that the world has put upon you and how sometimes we can allow those labels to define who we are. I officiated a wedding a few months ago, and I was standing here in this worship center and talking with someone that I hadn't seen since high school. And this person said something to me that kind of stopped me in my tracks, actually. And he said, wow, I can't believe you're a pastor. And for those of you that knew me back then, you may say the same thing. And quite honestly, sometimes I ask myself the same question. I can't believe it either. But you see, that's the beauty of it all. Because the labels that we put on ourselves, the labels that this world puts on us, they don't matter to God. Because God sees our heart. God knows it. And that's all that matters. So as you sit here today, I encourage you to think about this. Are you allowing the labels of this world, the labels of your past, to define who you are and limit your future? People have a hard time getting to know who we really are. We know what we do, we know what we like, we know what we drive, but many of us don't really know who we are at the core of our soul. 
Today, we're going to look at an ordinary person who, from the world's perspective, and probably from her own, would have never in a million years guessed the lessons that God had in store for her to teach the world, the impact that she was going to have, and how she can show the world what God can do with reputations and with labels. Rahab. For those that have heard this story before, you might associate a label with her name. Could you fill in this blank? Rahab the prostitute. You see, this label has followed Rahab around for thousands of years. Could you imagine if every time someone said your name, a label was attached to it that represented the very worst season of your entire life? You'd want to scream, that's not me. That's not my life. That's not who I am. Please don't judge me by something you think you know about me. Please don't judge me by something you think you knew about me 20 years ago. Like Rahab, maybe you're carrying around labels that were never meant to be carried for so long. You see, how we're raised sometimes has effects on our life that we don't even realize. Sometimes the ways we think, the ways we behave, the ways we treat others, the way we allow other people to treat us. Can you relate to any of these? Because Rahab can. At a time when women had no rights, Rahab was making a living in the only way that she knew how and the only way that she could to survive. She had bravery and courage to risk her life and to stand up for a God that she didn't even really know. She broke the chain of history in a way that only she could, and she filled her destiny ordained by God before the beginning of time. I heard this story once about a dog who was pregnant, and this mother dog got ran over by a car and was paralyzed and could not use her hind legs. Miraculously, the puppies were born totally fine. But the craziest part about this story is that the puppies grew up. And as they did, they didn't use their hind legs either. Having only their mother to look at as an example and as, in, as an influence on how to live, they were missing out. Many of us can relate to this story. Because we were brought up, the people we choose to, to surround ourselves with, the examples that we had, it shapes us and who we are, and helps us to think we know what we know. But sometimes when our eyes are open to a new way of being, a new way of thinking, and a new way of living, it is then that we can actually discover and see that there is so much more to this world that God needs us to know. You have seeds of greatness inside of you because you were created by a great God. And you cannot give people what you don't know that you have Maybe as you sit here today, you can relate to this. Maybe you, too, have been going through this life only using two legs instead of four. Because don't you see? This is what Jesus does. Jesus sets us free. Free from our labels, free from our upbringings, free from our patterns. But we need to be open with ourselves. We need to be honest with ourselves. We have to be willing to grow and change and break free from these cycles. We're going to look and see how God used Rahab, a prostitute. And in the midst of it, here's what she does. She finds God, and she knows God. She finds freedom in him. She discovers her purpose, and she makes a difference. Last week, Sam talked about Joshua. If you've not watched his message yet, I encourage you to go to rccsunday.com and check it out. This story of Rahab is intertwined in this story of Joshua. It's found starting in Joshua chapter 2. It's at this point in the story that the Israelite people are ready to take over the promised land. To gather information, Joshua secretly sent two men to gather information in a town called Jericho. So these two spies went, and they entered Jericho and came to the house of Rahab, the prostitute. I can't help but ask the question, how did the spies know to go to Rahab's house? Scripture doesn't make it perfectly clear, but I believe that God knew. God knew Rahab's heart. God heard her cries. And God knew the kind of faith that she needed to have in order for this to happen in history. You may not be fully known to others, even others in the room with you right now. In fact, you may not even fully know yourself. But I can tell you this. You are known by a God who passionately pursues you every single day. You are known by a God who knows everything about you. Nothing about you is off of his radar. So the king of Jericho said, Look, I know that some of the spies were at, were at this Rahab's house. He sent his people there to go find them. 
They go there and they say to Rahab, bring the men who came and entered your house, bring them to us. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Rahab hid the spies under some flax that she was drying on her roof. This was a courageous act, to say the least. She said, yeah, the men came to me, but I didn't know where they were from. Because you see, Rahab had come to believe in the same God that these spies served. Joshua 2.11 says, The Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. She said this to these spies. And it was then that she made a deal with them. She would help them to safety if they, in turn, would save her and her family when they came to destroy the city. The spies told her that this would be a deal, but she had to keep the secret. She couldn't tell anyone, and she had to gather all of her family into their house, and she had to hang a scarlet cord out of her window. Well, the deal with the spies struck. God gave Jericho to Israel by flattening its walls, like we heard Sam's kids tell us last week. Let's talk about these walls for a minute. It tells us in the Bible that Rahab's house was actually built inside of the walls, and the walls were so thick that chariots could actually drive over top of them. So if you think about this for a minute, the walls of Jericho came crumbling down, and the word used in the Bible that the, says that the walls were flattened. So the fact that Rahab's house was inside a portion of this wall and it was spared is a miracle, one that could only happen by God. So Joshua and the spies kept their word, and they welcomed Rahab and her family into their family. This story this woman of courage and her faith and her life has so many lessons for us. Rahab found God. She trusted in him when she had only heard about who she was before she even knew him in a personal way. What does that teach us? That teaches us that there is more grace in God's heart than there is sin in your past. Tell me anything that you have done and I will tell you how the grace of God can take you so much further than your sin will ever will. God not only loves you as you are, as you are, but he knows you as you are. And the truth is, nobody is where they should be. If you're here today and you're struggling with your past, you need to ask yourself the question, whose memory matters? Yours, other people's, or God's? And then you have to ask yourself, why do I keep remembering something that God has chosen to forget? Sin in your past may be loud, but God's word is so much louder. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12 says, And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. You see, Rahab's sins were never a hindrance to God's plan or his purpose for her life. From the days the walls crumbled, Rahab and her family were welcomed by the Israelites. She not only received God that day, but she also received his family. When you open the doors to Jesus, you also get a family too. You get a family of believers. Here at RCC, we're a family. We're kind of messed up at times, but we are a group of people that believe in one another, that walk along life's path with one another to the best of our ability without judgment, and love one another the way Jesus calls us to. Everyone fits here, and you will too. When you accept Jesus, you get him. You get a family. But most importantly, you get a future. Hebrews chapter 11 is entitled, Great Examples of Faith. And surprisingly, Rahab the prostitute is one of two women among a long, long list of men as examples of people with godly faith. It seems hard to question God and ask, okay, God, you're not only putting a woman, a woman into this beautiful chapter, but a woman who was a prostitute? She was a prostitute. God's word tells us so. But that is what is so authentic and real about this story. She's not ordinary. Because she had God, she's extraordinary. And you're not ordinary either. God can make you extraordinary too. We must never forget that God shows his mercy and his power through our weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 says, Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness, and that is why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and the hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It is out of Rahab's weakness that her faith is made strong. It tells us this in Hebrews eleven thirty one: By faith, the harlot Rahab, again with the label, 
did not perish with those who did not believe. Many people wouldn't probably risk their lives for family and friends. Yet here we see Rahab risking her life to protect enemy spies. Why? Because Rahab lived by faith, not by sight. The very first sentence in this chapter of listing these heroes of faith says this. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of the things that we cannot see. You too, all of us, can experience this victory in Christ, but we must be willing to take risks. Our victories, like Rahab, will have a direct effect on the role that God has called each of us to play in this world. Rahab found God. And God set her free. And God wants nothing more than for you to be free as well. But first, you must understand a few things. Take a look at Matthew chapter 11 with me. It says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. What is a yoke anyway? Yoke can be described as two things in reference to this Old Testament. One would be a piece of equipment that was really, really heavy that was used to keep oxen together when they were pulling a heavy load. And the other yoke is referred to a rabbi's yoke, which which included a lot of rules and a lot of regulations. Following God was never meant to be a burden. Following God is supposed to be as simple as loving him and loving others. Instead of a yoke of obligations and rules and regulations and burdens and heaviness, Jesus offers us a yoke that is light, a yoke that can take these burdens and make them into something that is spiritually productive. So then you might be asking, well, how can I make my life spiritually productive? and How can I give my life purpose? Well, you can start by asking yourself a few questions. What motivates you? What is the thing that when you do it, you feel purposeful? What really makes you happy? Is it doing the things you love? Is it watching a Packer game or going out to dinner, going shopping? Because that's not enough. There has to be more. There's so much more. Your answers to these questions is the start of finding where your purpose is found. Many of us spend so much time meeting the needs of other people's expectations that we lose sight of our purpose. Do you ever wonder why you're so tired? Come to me, all you are weary and heavy burden. And Jesus says that I will give you rest. Many of us have been using only two of our four legs for way too long. Because the truth is, the best view is from the windshield, not the rearview mirror. When you live in the space of yesterday, you're not available for today. The very fact that people have gone through the same things that you're going through right now tells you that you're going to be okay, and you're going to get through it too. You can't ever build from what you did, but you have to start building from who you are. Like Rahab, you open the doors to Jesus. She made a choice to believe in God, and he used her to change the world. She didn't have to get it all together first. She didn't have to have scripture memorized. God says, you do what you can do, and I will do all the things that you can't. I cannot tell you that once you accept Christ into your life, everything's going to be easy because that's simply not true. The call to follow Jesus will always come with a risk. Do you know that the safest place for an airplane, do you know where that is? It's in the hangar. It's in the parking lot. But we did not build airplanes to stay in the parking lot. We built airplanes so we can fly, so that we can see the world. But there's risk when we get on that plane. Same is true for all of us. God didn't make us to have a safe and easy and comfortable life. He gave you his life so that you can find purpose in him and you can be free to fulfill it. But there's an even greater thing, and it's the ending of the story, and it's the best thing yet. Every single time Rahab is mentioned in the Bible, she has this label attached to her. Rahab the prostitute, or Rahab the harlot, every single time except one. In Matthew chapter 1, it shows us the genealogy of Jesus. Hang with me on this for a second. The son of Rahab and Salmon was Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed married, and his son was Jesse. 
Jesse had a son, and his name was David. Jesus was a direct descendant of David. Do you know what this means? This means that Rahab was Jesus's great, great times a whole bunch of greats grandmother. It is this time, this one time in scripture when Rahab is connected to Jesus that she is not described as a prostitute. Don't you see? When you're connected with him too, your future is always bigger than your past. And the only way that you can fully let go of the past is when it is confronted with a future that relies and loves and lives for him. If a woman like Rahab, a prostitute, can become one of the greatest examples of faith, she can have a line in the lineage and be a line in the motherhood of Jesus, then surely you can know without a doubt that nothing is impossible with God. Matthew 19, 26 tells us that humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. If I, me, an ordinary girl with labels from her past can become a pastor, someone that God can choose to use to help influence and change other people's lives for him, then surely nothing is impossible with God. And the same is true for you. Take it and believe it and live it. Because it isn't who you were that matters to God. It is who you are in him and who you are becoming by the power of his spirit. So today, like Rahab, toss that scarlet thread out your window and say with conviction, here I am, Lord, save me. Would you pray with me? God, today we come before you and we ask that you help us to see ourselves the way you do. Help us to remove any burdens from our past Help us to see our future in you. Help us discover our purpose in this world so that other people can see you because of who we are, because of how we love, and because of how we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, everybody. So glad that you could join us today uh, for worship. If you want to honor God with your finances and give generously, um, and also support the mission and uh, ministries of RCC. There's a couple different ways you could do that. You could give online right now by going to uh, rccsunday.com and using our giving platform. Uh, it's super easy, super customizable. You can use a debit card or a bank account. Um, you could set it up for a reoccurring payment or just a one-time gift. So uh, definitely recommend that. But I also want to let you know that if you want to drop off a check, because a lot of people prefer to just do that, um, you can slide it in the mail slot at our downtown building, 155 State Street, and um, use the, do it. there's the mail slot in the entrance that faces uh, Fond du Lac Street, um, that direction. So uh, thank you so much for being here today. You guys have a great week, and looking forward to worshiping with you again next Sunday.